There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. First, let me apologize for the new video imagery and clarify that I am not anonymous the cyber terrorist network but merely adapting the visual effects. I like the anonymity of its ambience and it gives me more of a, how should I say, form that is acceptable to the minds of mankind. Here I wish to share some philosophical opinions based from the observations of my culture and beliefs. It may be surprising to the world but despite popular belief those who practice true magic do have a belief in the one you call God. It's just another cultural perspective is all. Let me explain the law pertaining to the Magus Supreme or in more modern terminology that lies at Hedorat Sage. There is a prophecy among us. That one day a mystic will be born among us near the end times of the great cataclysm. He shall have mastery over the elemental forces as though he were a master of the arts. He shall be the living embodiment of the fifth element in which the other four in unison make possible, the life force. He shall become the focal point in which all things come into being. I am but one scribe of many. My people transcend time and space, so we have all seen of these things known to mankind as the beginning of existence. I shall record here my testimony of what transpired according to the visions and interpretation that I have understood as shown to me by the Kwisatz Haderach Sage, the source of creation, also known as the Transcended Magus, the Kwisatz Haderach Sage, the Alpha and the Omega or God. My people once had a name for him and it was Eli Alanik, the king of the realm of light. This being exists in a dual state of existence, both physical and metaphysical, simultaneously and consciously. He was brought into being through the path of cause and effect. Something cannot come from nothing, and thus the fabrics of the cosmic balance played its hand of cause and effect to bring about the design of the physical source of the universe's first inertia of existence made from a point in time where the universe already had formed yet existing in both the states of it what can best be described in words as an imagination type intangible being or manifestation of the physical being's consciousness that exists without physical form and thus bypasses the laws of the physical universe. His other state has the power to bring his thoughts into reality. In this state he can transcend time and space at all without the use of magic, he can cast the most complex of spells without physical motion. He can transcend death and rise and maintain his own life. Even though mortally wounded and his will is like some cosmic tarot card that can shift and alter the course of events as they are happening. However he is limited in his cosmic power when pertaining to the physical body. Only the intangible state or as some have come to call, the Holy Spirit, can transcend time and space. His physical form cannot nor can it preform the actions of it which makes him the source of creation without his intangible state that works like a mediator. All this however is but a phase in what can be described as the journey through the life of this being. The destiny of his purpose as the creator of the universe was only a phase at one point in his existence. Designed by the fabrics which called him into being, once his purpose of creating the universe had been completed, his role as the creator also receded in order for the fabrics of all that is could remain uncorrupted. Though he is still a powerful being afterwards, there is no ascending back to the point as the creator. During the very beginning of particle formation and the beginning of all that is the being which was the first inertia cause was actually a combined state of three different beings. In order to achieve the state of transcendence necessary to attain the complete awareness and understanding needed to be the creator he converged three separate beings and incorporated them into his conscious. These other two beings joined with his thoughts and mind through the intangible state which allowed them to exist as one being even though separated by thousands of years from each other for the duration of this event. Nothing is known all about the other two beings, only that they represented the two equilibriums of balance.
one was an ultimate manifestation of virtue and the other was the ultimate state of evil, as he was the conduit and physical vessel for both beings. Together they made the triune Godhead and were a being of what can be defined as omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. Once the universe had been created as he descended from his state of transcended being he separated the triune by incarnating himself as Jesus of Nazareth, using the cycle of life and death to separate the three beings so they could return to their respective places. This testimony is merely a translation of what I have witnessed while traversing the mystical artifact known as the mirror of time designed by one of my predecessors. And yes, for those who are curious, my name is John.